Next, we have Debbie Almontasser. Debbie Almontasser is the board president of the Muslim Community Network. She's an activist well known from New York and was also the, the lead organizer of the Yemeni bodega strike against the Muslim ban. Debbie Almontasser. Assalamu alaikum, Minneapolis. Peace and greetings. There is so much light coming my way that I can barely see the amazing diversity that is probably sitting in this incredible audience. So I will just close my eyes and I can envision the beauty that is in front of me at this moment. I want to thank each and every one of you for being out here. I want to thank CARE Minnesota for inviting me to be a part of this incredible action, day of action, to actually get Minnesotans to be out there and to work collectively and to be strong with one another to combat what we are experiencing as a nation. When the Muslim ban came out back in January and I was sitting in front of my computer and I saw that flash on Mike, and I opened it up, and I read that it was passed. I could not believe my eyes. And when I saw the countries that were officially a part of the Muslim ban, my heart sank, because one of those countries was my family's country, Yemen. We all know what those countries are and what they represent. We know that they are third world countries that are struggling to survive, that their people are fleeing all over the world to find a better home and a better opportunity for their families. We know that those countries have never engaged in any kind of terrorism in US grounds. And for them to be targeted and a part of the Muslim ban was absolutely devastating for me and Americans across the country. And the reason for that is because our country is not about banning people. Our country, <laughs> our country was built on the backs of immigrants. Those who came to the shores of this great land didn't have visas. When they came, to the shores of this country, on the Nina, the Pinta, and Santa Maria. No one was there to stamp for them a visa. But in fact, the Native American Indians welcomed them. And then we know the history of what happened to the Native American Indians. And we must never forget that history, because that history is a part of this great land. We must honor them, we must show them respect, and we must hold them up in everything and anything that we do as a nation. As I tried to assess the Muslim ban and what it meant for me, as well as many members of our country, it reminded me of a movie that many of you might remember. The, Magnif the Magnificent Seven, which is a Western movie. How many people have seen that movie? Okay, great. And there was actually a remake of it with Denzel Washington in 2016. So if you all know that movie, it's about this outlaw named Bartholomew Bogue who goes out with members of his clan and they actually rob people and they kill people. Bogue reminds me of what Donald Trump right now is doing to our country. He is robbing it of its American values and what it stands for. What ended up happening in the movie is that there were a great deal of people in Rose Creek that were slaughtered. And there was one woman named Emma Cullen who actually got on a horse and rode to the next town and asked for people to help. And she found a man who was a warrant officer, and she asked him to please come help. And what he did was very interesting. He found a collective pe of people who he recruited, and he said to them, we need to go help this town. And in 
that team of people that he brought together were people of diverse cultures. There was a Native American, a Mexican, a Latino, and for those of you who've seen the movie, you know what I'm talking about. And what ended up happening was they went and they helped this town become freed of Vogue and the people who were there hijacking their city. And at the end of the movie, Emma Cullen says, Hero heroism was made, these men are legends, and that was magnificent. And so the reason I share this story with you is because each and every one of you who are here as an ally, you are going to be a legend for being here today. You are going to be magnificent because you are standing for what our American values are all about. You are not going to allow anything unconstitutional to happen in our country because you are here today and you are saying, I'm here, I will stand with you, and I will make sure that our American values are intact, and each and every person coming to this great land deserves to be here. And I know that it is a difficult time for us to be allies, but if there is one moment in our history as a nation that we must have moral courage, it is now, my brothers and sisters. It is now. So I applaud CARE Minnesota for rolling out the actions that you will be hearing later today but I also want you to walk away with some tangible things that we've done in New York City with our allies. And they're very simple. When an incident of hate happens, call your local mosque and let them know you stand with them. Start a media campaign under the hashtag I stand against hate if you are on social media. Post a sign in your window saying, I stand against hate. Write a letter and drop it off to your nearest mosque, showing them that you are providing them the support they deserve. Organize a vigil in your neighborhood. Go out of your way and greet a Muslim neighbor who you've never probably met, but greet them. And most importantly, which is something that we as Muslims are actually asked to do in our faith tradition is wear a smile on your face. Give someone an affirmation smile when you see a Muslim sister or brother. Let them know that their existence matters and they belong here. And I also wanna give a message right now to my fellow brothers and sisters who are Muslim. Right now, more than ever, the six countries that are under the ban, this is your defining moment. And I say this to my fellow Yemeni American brothers, my Somali brothers and sisters, Syrian, Libyan, Iranian, and Sudanese, this is your defining moment. This is your time to raise your voice and speak on behalf of the people of your community and let the world know that you refuse to allow members of your community and the countries they come from to be marginalized. It is our moral imperative to do this. And as you heard in my, when I was introduced, you heard about the Yemeni bodega strike. The Yemeni American community across the United States has been an A, actually been non-political in the United States. All they cared about and continue to care about, and they should be able to care about it because we all care about surviving and taking care of our families, going to work, making sure their children have an education, and repeating that cycle daily. But when the Muslim ban came out in New York City, they realized they needed to do something. And they declared a day to strike in New York City where a thousand bodegas, small grocery stores closed for a day. The revenue would totaled to a million dollars in the eight hours they closed. 
And they came for a rally that we thought we were only going to get 2,000 people if we were lucky. Brothers and sisters, there were over 6,000 Yemeni Americans who filled Borough Hall. They filled Borough Hall because they felt the sting of the ban. Each and every one of those bodega store owners had a family member that was impacted by the ban. And they sacrificed. They sacrificed to close their stores and to show their presence and to be loud and proud of who they are and what they represent and the country they very, the very country they came from. And when we spoke about creating the strike from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m., there was something beautiful that they said to me. They said, we cannot close at 8 a.m. And when I asked them why, their response to me was, we have people who come in here every day to buy their coffee and their paper and children who buy a snack before they go to school. We do not want to disrupt their daily routine. I got so emotional to hear how much they cared about the very people that they serve every day. And in response to that, I said to them, well, what should we do? They responded about doing it from 12 to 8 p.m. And they also shared with me that the day that the ban came into effect, all of their neighbors came out to the stores and told them how much they appreciated them and that Trump doesn't represent everybody's views of the Yemeni American community. And now here today, <laughs> all of our allies sitting in this audience, I know that you don't represent Trump's opinions. I know that you stand for justice and equality and the dignity of all people. And so I applaud you for being here. I thank you from the bottom of my heart for being allies and standing up and being your brother and your sister's keepers. God bless you all, and I look forward to meeting some of you later. Thank you.